students, right? You don't have to be that graduate. You don't have to be that um, that professor in order to do it. And so we've to set out to be like, hey, let's just let's show the everyday working person that you can do it. And so the trader on the street, what we do is we pull somebody who may may or may not have traded before, may or may not be with us. Um, when we started out, we didn't we didn't know people, they didn't know us, and they sit down, push on for about an hour to hour, whatever long a session takes, um, and we show them that you can do it. To date, uh, on every episode that we've done on Trader on the Street, um, it would have been profitable. So I'm going to jinx them again. <laughs> Some have definitely taken longer, just like when you guys trade on all. Sometimes you hit it really quick, and sometimes it takes you a little bit longer. Right? We don't control the markets. We we flip, we trade in the markets, so we have to get what the markets give us. So, um, trader on the street is exactly that. We wanted to bring trader on the street to you guys. Today is our first rally. What a rally is is it's an opportunity to not only do a trader on the street episode, but also spend some time with you guys to talk about what we just saw, um, go through it. And then also share with you guys some other um, experience and knowledge that we've come and found to be helpful for us. Uh, hopefully at the end of today, you walk away um, feeling like this was time well spent. You'll learn a lot. And some of the things that you've learned, you can take away and put into your own trading. Okay? If that is the case and we end today with that, that, that accomplished, that's our goal. And hopefully you guys walk away feeling that rally was awesome. And I'd love to go, do it again next time you're in Canada, right? Or come down and visit us. We'd love, we'd love to have you. Uh, that match that in. Uh, we are doing this. So we are doing this. This is live. Uh, we do what we call uh, the tap. We have what we call the tap room in the street, where members of the on street will be able to watch uh, these episodes and many other episodes live. Um, that Sean does usually once a week. And so we do have people maybe already chatting. Um, and so I think we're recording this is the last session. Uh, we're not going to do any QA during the training session. So if you guys have any questions, please please write them down. And then we will go back through once the session is over. Okay? Because we're going to record it. So uh, if you guys see if you guys see a move that you like or Sean does something you like, feel free to cheer, clap, um, get excited. We love that. Camera, okay? But if you have any questions, he's probably not going to pull out the uh, recording and your question at that time, but we will do that after. Okay? Can you get in on the chat? But if yeah. you're a member of Trigger on the Street, so if you're not a member of Trigger on the Street, you can log in to your, to your account and you can jump in and, and be in on the chat. But you'll probably have it up to so, see. So, so, so welcome everybody. Welcome everybody uh, in the tap room. We're excited. Um, with that, uh, anybody have any questions before we get started? All right, everybody have internet access, we're good. Um, you guys feel free to follow along um, at the sun, but if you do, I would probably recommend that you do it in a demo account if you've never traded with them before. Um, and follow along, you're welcome to do that. Uh, just, we don't know what the market's going to give us today, so we can talk about market conditions as well. How many that traders? Um, now... <sighs> What's that? So we actually have um, quite a bit of other traders right now. Hey, welcome to find a spot. In fact, uh, yeah, right over here next to next to John's. Where are you from? Calgary. Nice to have you. Nice to have you. All right. Um, we have, I don't know, Sean, what's the, you know, what the count is? Uh, 100 traders over 1,600 right now. Yeah, over 1,600 traders. Yeah. So that's actually really good. Um, that's really good, considering um, if you look at uh, other brokerages or whatever, not just a very, very, very few places to have that many other traders. Uh, all right, um, if, if let's, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to bring uh, John, John, John here. John, give John a round of applause. 
John to kind of help us out today and be our guest trainer. So, so, so he has had actually actually push push all the buttons. Uh, and yeah, trainer John's today. A live. Oh, yeah. How do you feel about that, John? Yeah, you like to spend his money. I will come to check on it. You won't lose any of your money. <laughs> We're 100 percent confident John likes to work on this. I'm going to check on it. You won't lose any of your money. <laughs> All right, let's have you go ahead and sit down. Um, oh. and then let's, let, I'll turn my mic off. Sean, you want to unmute you? And, and John, let's see who we got. John, look forward to trading with you. Slank. <laughs> like All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Dave. And, uh, and John, thank you for trading with me today. Um, let Let's make sure we're going to do a couple of sound checks and make sure that the Zoom, our, our meeting room, is is okay, and that everybody can hear us out there, and that we're not too uh, too uh, choppy. I think we've got two mics working, so we close that mic off. All right, let's do a quick sound check. Uh, Zoom, Trader, the tap room. Can you hear me? Okay. Is the audio better? No longer choppy, that must be it. <laughs> All right, for those of you out in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the tap room, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna do a little trading session here with, uh, with uh, John. This is John. John's from Jasper. Beautiful place. Oh yes it is. Not too far removed from Calgary. Not too far away. No, no, I'm only five hours. <laughs> five hours. <laughs> that was half of our trip up here. <laughs> All right. Well, excited to trade? Yes, absolutely. Very much so. Awesome. Stoked to be here. Awesome. Well, let's just jump right in. You know, most, most little gatherings like this, you, you uh, get these long introductions and, you know, it's, you know, a lot of talk and a very little action. We do just the opposite around here. We are a lot of action and very little talk. So we're going to jump into the market here in just a second and and uh, and start trading. It's been quite volatile this morning, and we had a uh, news announcement come out just recently. So hopefully things will kind of get into a little a, a little groove here. All right, let's share the screen. All right. Now, everybody out in the tap room, can you see the Alveo? Okay. Awesome. Oh. All right. Look at that huge outside range. Oh, no. <laughs> Our nemesis. <laughs> My nemesis. Oh. Uh, so. We're looking at the Euro JPY there. We'll see what the Euro USD, a little gap on the Euro USD. So that's, that's interesting. So let's keep a close eye on that area right in there. Mm -hmm. um, because as this market, you know, finds some, finds some uh, volatility, some, some legs to it, this will act as a support level. Are we looking um, to fill that one? Um, if, if this is a runaway, so the market has been down for the majority of the, of the uh, for the last several days, right? The euro has been down. So if this is a runaway and a reversal, then it probably won't fill in, but it could easily test it. So we'll, we'll, we'll just watch when we get to that layer. So the first thing we want to do is just put a line right there so we keep an eye on that. That'll be a new very important trading point in our session today. So we'll put that on there so that we see it. <clears throat> um, it looks like it wants to do a little breakout, but let's see what the bigger picture, let's see. So we always wanna take a look at the big picture. And we can see a little bit of a run yeah. there. 
And we want to we want to kind of get a feel for where if this thing's going to continue running higher, where do you think it's going to stop? So we're just getting our bearings. It's like it's like you head out, you know, into the mountains, and the first thing you do is you want to get your bearings. You want to know where where you are relative to all the major landmarks. And so these are kind of like landmarks, and we're gonna we're gonna kind of make sure we know where everything is. So let's pop that up right up to that point right there, and we're almost there, aren't we? So now the question is, do we want to fade that and look for a reversal to come in, or do we want to try and wait for a breakout? So to, to kind of answer that question, what I'll look for is where's the next stop? If it, if it breaks up, where are the next stops? So we should see a stop right in here. We should see another stop right up in there. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I don't mind fading that all the way up, trying to catch a reversal all the way up to those top points. Okay. So we'll, we'll probably work and, and try and play any kind of volatility we can all the way up. This will be kind of our point of no return where- So you're short term bullish. We're short term bullish, but we're gonna trade the bearish side of it. So we're going to t try and catch the down leg. Yep. So I'm not going to trade the move it's making right now because it's making a bullish move. But we're going to look and see what's the next move mm -hmm. and can we catch that next move. And that's what we're going to try and catch. So with that, we got static, bad. I don't know. You do your thing. I'll do mine. <laughs> All right. So let's start out. Let's put a, a couple of shorts on. Uh, so we're going to trade point 0.1 loss size for the beginning right here. We're just going to get our feet wet, dip our toes in this water. So go ahead and do another one right here. Yep, yeah, we got two. And if it pops up a little bit more, add another one. So just a little pop right there, maybe. So we're at three. We're at three. So dipping your toes is five positions for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's dipping your five little toesies, your five little toesies in the water. So anytime it pops up like that, right add another one. You're not afraid it's going to keep running? If it does, we've got lots of little stops where we expect that market to. So we're going to layer in, and and hopefully we get a little bit of volatility that comes into the market, and we can we can uh, make a little bit of money on that volatility. So volatility should come down and and trigger all of these targets. Okay. If if we've got good volatility, that that'll be easy for the market to do that. Let's see if I can make it low. Yeah, you, there we go. It's coming down, hitting those targets. Now, if it pops up again, add more trades. On okay. It. So, like it is right now? A little bit more right there. Add quick. One, two, three, oh, four, five. I don't want to sell here. Oh, yeah, you don't want to sell. Oops, sorry. Yeah, or, sorry, sell. One. Two, three, four. Perfect. If it pops up again, add another another two. Go boom boom. If it gets above the high. Yeah. One, two. That's seven. That's fun. Add another one right here. Now, right here, we may get a little surge in energy. So the market might actually jump at this point. And so go ahead and enter a couple here. And, and we're gonna watch and see if it makes that tail. If it forms the tail, we're in good shape. If it, go ahead and add a couple more, one, two. 
So I like that. So I like the tail on the top side of that trade right here because yeah, that yeah. gives us a little, it opens the door for the sellers. Let's uh, do a couple of real quick, let me run the mouse real quick. I'm gonna pull these down if I can get into it quick enough. There's a time to be greedy and a time to not be greedy. And uh, this is a time to be greedy because you've got good volatility. And so I pulled the top two down or three down and I'm gonna move the top, bottom two up. So we're just kind of averaging those two okay. right into each other. other. Like we're gonna do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And didn't drop quite far enough. So now that the bulls will have its run here in a second. That static is really bad, isn't it? Oh, there we go. There's a pop down. See if we get some follow through and a turn. Now the turning point is right where all of our targets are. So in this case, we could actually pull those targets down if we expect the turn, or we should pull the targets up if we don't expect the turn. Is that your phone? Yeah. <laughs> Just wipe it off. <coughs> Just keep going. <laughs> should tag down there. Yeah, we should get a little turn here. Nice, very nice. All right, so I expect support to come in right in here, or it'll build a little bit of momentum and, and drop lower. So we're in a wait, we wait now. We're in a waiting phase right now. Looks like it's going to come through. All right, so now we're going to wait for some support and maybe a little consolidation. We just lost our audio. Yeah. Is that working? It's a new mic. The, no, no, don't worry about it. This is this is for camera. That'll be for room. Just keep it between the two. I'll pick it up. Okay. There's always some technical challenges <laughs> when we're figuring this out. It'd be boring otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're. Looking to go long again. Yeah, so we can take a long trade at this point if you want. Just maybe just one or two because we don't know. This is a, a legitimate turn on the one minute chart. So it's a legitimate turn. Now we're looking for some consolidation and, an, and another turn for a leg higher. So now we're going to look. It'll, it'll either consolidate right in here. I'm going to run the mouse just yep. a bit. Yeah. It will either consolidate right in here, which is kind of where it's at, a little higher than that, or it'll break that and move down here, or it'll break that and move down here. So we're gonna do the same thing we were doing on the top side, we're gonna do now on the bottom side and try and get it to move up higher. So you can go ahead and add another one right here, and another one right here, and another one. Perfect. So the turning point is the top of the previous candle. So we got the active candle right here, mm -hmm. and the previous candle is that. That's the turning point, the top of that right now. Okay. 
So I'm at lower low, which will mean that now the propensity, the door is open for it to drop down to that next white line. So we may get a little pop, but this is a, this is a, if it gets, if it gives us a little pop right here, that's a good place for a whipsaw because it's created a lower low and technically it's kind of like, it'll be an outside range yeah. on that candle. And so if it does pop, it'll be a weak pop most likely. So if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Now, the longer, if it, if it can hold this range, this consolidation range, that's a good thing for our trade. If it forms a lower low, that's a bad thing for the trade, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's going against this. Everyone out in, in uh, the tap room, um, is everything, uh, can you read and, and see and hear everything okay? Just doing a quick check. We had some audio issues on our side. Perfect, okay, fantastic. All right, so let's watch and see if it forms a lower low here. If that does, then, then we will we'll expect it to come down to see lower low. Now we'll expect it to get down to that next white line. And if it does, then you add five at that white line if you can get it, or just before, like right now, start to add. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, exactly. Yeah, wait for it to drop a little bit more. Uh, it, didn't, it doesn't want to. It, 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 it's not over. <laughs> the down, clock, the the down is not over clock. yet. <laughs> it's 30 seconds to get far away. You know what? Let me turn this video on. All right, get ready to add a couple more. Right there, good. So it should drop a little, little bit more. So let's let it give it a minute here. We don't want to get too heavy. That's the big, that's the big danger, yeah. right? In trading, is that we get in too heavy. And then when we take a loss and we're in too heavy, you know, that's <laughs> hard to recover from. So one more, if it pops down just a little bit, add another two, one, two. Right here, one, two, perfect. Does it again, add two more. Good. And if it does it again, add two more. Nice. I'm going to show you a little trick here, John. So we had a down leg right here. It started at the top of that candle and came down to the bottom of that candle. And then we had a little bit of a sideways. So the next leg could go down as far as this white line right here. So very often the move before, if you get a down leg and then a sideways consolidation and then a continuation, usually and very often the move before is equal to the move after, or uh -huh. the move after is equal to the move before. Okay. Just, a, just a little uh, trick, you know, to kind of, when you see it happening, it kind of helps to kind of know, you know, where's the, where's the outer right. edge of right. this thing? Where could it go if it goes? All right, we want to know where our turning point is. And we don't have a, a real good mark for our turning point here because we've got a little tiny, the previous candle is a tiny candle. Mm -hmm. And we've got the current candle is both higher and lower than the previous candle. So we don't really have a good turning point. But if I had to guess, if you go back one, two, three candles, the top of the body is going to be the turning point. Okay. So it'll, it'll rise up like it's doing here. And when it hits that turning point, you'll see it stop right there. Yep. Ah, see, isn't that cool? So you gotta, it's important that you always know where that turning point is. 
and because it's a resistance level for your trade. Yeah. All right, go two more, one, two. And we want to try and get our, we want to try and get two pips. So let's not do anything for a minute here. We want to get two pips before that turning point. So, so drops just a little bit more, add two more. We're building longs, but is it not dropping? It is, yeah, and the trend is in the in the down on the downside. But remember, we're in we're in the current the current move is a short, yeah. right? And oh, perfect. Add five. One, two, three, four, five. You don't have the time limit. I do at home. <laughs> the time limit. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. A thousand milliseconds. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Add, add, add a couple more here. Add a couple more. Oh, not yet. As it drops, when it drops yeah. down, then you add them. And see where that measure is. We yeah. are almost to that measure. Right here is the measure. Add a couple. Add a couple more. Now this is a grinding market and these are awful. I hate these, right? Because it doesn't give us any volatility. In order to, traders really, in order to be successful, they need a little bit of volatility. They need that up and down movement. Yeah. And when you get these grinding markets, it doesn't give you a chance to get, you know, you're building positions, but it doesn't give you a good chance to get out. So any chance you can get up into a profit on this trade, what you want to do is take off an equal amount of the top trades now. Okay. Okay. This is a this is now we're into what I call a wobble stage because we're gonna we've got trades up here, we've got trades down here. And if the market comes up and hits a target level, then we're gonna wobble out of the other trades, use the profit to pay for yeah. the okay. losses on the other side. That's wobbling. This is a management technique that we use. And if it drops down into that white line, add another, add some more. A couple more. We want to build a little heavier here because this is the expected end yeah. of our of the down leg. This is the expected end of it. Should I be bringing down these? Take profits? Yeah, they're a little bit. We can just we can close them out manually by clicking uh, on the X. That might be a little easier in this case, or you can pull them down either or whatever makes you comfortable. Yeah, so yeah. Be able to tell which yeah which exactly. Yeah, sort it so that you can see your losses. We're very close to hitting a target layer. So as it as it hits that layer, nice. Now take a couple off. Two. Couple more. Yeah. Let it, get, let, it get, let it run just a second. If it if it wants to run, let it run. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's a chance it could just have a V reversal and just run all the way up. <laughs> That'd be all right. Isn't trading fun, John? It's awesome. Ooh, I love it. Man, way better than video games. <laughs> Jeff, you're not supposed to tell him that. You were all excited. Oh, I had a great night. <laughs> not gonna lie. Uh, I had a great night. I did not want to go to bed. I didn't want to go to sleep. Uh, <laughs> The market was just moving so nice last night. After the holiday, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Monday was kind of treacherous. But yeah, Monday was brutal. <laughs> so this might this might run another little leg here. So let's let it run. Yeah, it'd be great if it takes the whole the whole range out there. Looks like it might have just found resistance. Yeah, that's a good place for it. But why? Why do you think that's a good place for resistance? Right around here. Yeah. So right in that line, a little higher than the line, the white line, right? 
but you've got a wick. Oops, let me run the mouse real quick. Show everybody out in the in the tap room here. You got a wick here, and a wick here, and a wick here, and now a, a wick here. So you've got a real solid line, resistance line right in there. And it's going to have to break that in order to hit all of these targets. So what we could do is we could take that one, because that's not really well placed. We can move that up, because if it breaks it, we should have a good expansion bar. So we'll just move all of those up and let that momentum take it through. So we have a choice. We can either move all of these up or move them all down below that below that line. Okay. That's our choice. We, we can do either, you know, whatever we're comfortable with, but that's it. But it, it's better to adjust them so that you've got either maximizing your move or hitting a high probability. Would you want to try and do the same thing consistently? Consistently? Well, in order to average your stats properly, would you want to bring them all down all the time rather than some move up, some move down? So for st if you're trading for stats, right now we're not trading for stats, we're trading for income. When you're in, when you're in the fund, when you're in the apiary fund and you're, and you're uh, trying to get into a funded account, then you're trading for stats. And so the purpose behind trading for stats is it helps you know, learn how to make adjustments in your trading to hit an objective. That's a skill. That's a soft skill that every trader needs to understand and know. And so, um, and that's why we do the, that's why we focus in on stats. To, right now we're trading for money, right? And stats, stats are not our primary concern. Money is our primary concern. So, that's why we'll adjust in this case. If we, if we felt like there wasn't anything supporting this, this market, this up leg, then I would have moved those down. But because we've got a nice big rally this morning, yeah, support. yeah ooh, big whipsaw. Those are no fun. So because we had that big rally this morning, there's, there's still some buyers in this market for sure. Yeah. And we're just gonna give them a chance to, to run, their, run their, their trades. So we should get another, if this is a legitimate break, we should have two to three candles of up. If it's not, if it's a weak link, if it's a weak break, then we may have another leg down now before moving up. Before moving up or, you know, if it comes down, now the, the previous low is at risk if it comes down. So just looking into the future, playing the what if game. What if the market does this? What am I going to do? What if the market does that? What am I going to do? You can do the same methodology on any time frame. Any time frame does not matter, yeah. Yeah, that's a good observation. All right. In a case like this, I might close out. Oh, well, <laughs> these little ones here. Yeah, my instincts <laughs> kick in. Yeah. I was like, I, I would most often close those out because I'm close enough to the target that okay. you know leaving them on doesn't do me. Do so you mean flatten the position? Flatten just the loss of the okay. loss positions if it rallies up. <clears throat> See, we were really close to our targets. And, and that's when I was like, close, close, and take a little small loss um, as opposed to, and then I got two open positions that I can add into the, into the trade as it comes back down. Yeah. So I'm just always trying to, to manage my position size so that I've got a manageable size, right? 1.2 is very manageable. We're not in any, we're not at risk at any, with anything right here. Now we're still waiting to reach the take profit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this stuff. was a break, a fake out, right? It it broke out, but it came right back down. So now we're in a down leg. So now we've got to find support for the down leg. So if it comes down to the, we've got the current white line and then the second white line below it, mm -hmm. that should be a good support. So we'll add trades at the second white line. We'll add maybe five positions there. This one here? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. 
So coming down, see if it, if it can get all the way down there. If so, we're gonna add, we'll add five toesies to the water, <laughs> to the glacier water, which is really cold, <laughs> I found out. <laughs> Canadians are tough because they were all out there swimming <laughs> in the glacier water. I'm like, you guys are crazy. So, yeah, yeah, maybe add one or two. And then you need to pop down, add another one. No, let's see, it might break here, so let's pause. But so it's building a little bit of, it's building a little momentum. You see the speed picked up on that. So anytime you see speed pick up, pause. <laughs> Move your hand away from the mouse. <laughs> Take time out, sit on your hands if you have to, something. But that speed is your gift, that's your tail, right? And the speed is, a, it's saying, hey, I'm picking up speed. That means a lot of money is moving through the market right now. Do you also notice some of the candles tend to move faster near the end of the minute? Yeah, that definitely, yeah. And, and especially towards the end of hours and the beginning of hours too. Okay. So you'll look at your big, your big range bars are usually around some bigger, bigger. Uh, the bulk of the move happens in a couple of seconds. Yeah. And then the rest is sideways. Yeah. All right, we just made another turn for an up leg, which is great, fantastic. Now we've got another problem. We can, those, we will we'll miss that. Yeah, that, lit, that layer. Yeah, we're gonna get, move them up or down. Greedy, I would go greedy. I would go greedy with you. Oops. Maybe a little too greedy there, John. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking up the wrong one. <laughs> it's hard to catch them sometimes. All right, the big moment here. Boom, boom, boom. We're gonna get him. There we Beautiful. go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. That was really good. Still looking to go well. yeah, Thank you. Hey. Awesome. You did all of it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now we wait, right? We're at a resistance level, but we're in a different, we're in a different leg now. We're still looking bullish on this. We're still looking bullish, yeah, for sure. Um, I tend to not take these breakout trades. Um, so I tend to not go long here unless I have a little bit of a consolidation. So I almost always wait for a consolidation. The reason being is because that candle, the previous candle, is about two to three times the average, right? So two to three times average candles sometimes Momentum. are a little more they, they can be a little weak sometimes they move too far too fast and oh, so okay. sometimes they can pull back not, not always if it's strong momentum then it can just keep running if you put fractals on here you would see a fractal at the top one at the bottom mm -hmm. then playing a fractal breakout might be more beneficial than an inside breakout uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, if you can, if you can get some good momentum at the fractal, definitely. That's a good point. So, and the other thing is, is majority of your move happens in two to three bars. So we're already three bars into it. So this is this is going to be the more than likely the end of that move. So. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait for a consolidation or a little pullback and then we're gonna, well, now it wants to run. <laughs> the market always does that to me, <laughs> always. Um, I would fade this, so put a couple of shorts on, one, two. And if it runs a little bit more, add two more. One, two. So it's building up momentum. So this is a higher risk trade than anything we've done so far, but we're coming into resistance and we had the three bars of, of bullish bars, three bullish bars. So a little bit of a pullback is not, in, is not out of the question at this point. 
So now I scout these. So I'm not going. To, I'm not necessarily going to look for a full two pips. So I take off that 0 0.6. Yep, there, perfect. 0 0.7, and then uh, the. Let's see if you can get a little bit. Very good. Yeah, better is good. And pull one more off. Now, if you can get down two pips, if, like if it can drop down to that, add some longs because now we've got we've got some some pressure let out of the market, okay. and we oh go ahead and add a couple right here, a couple longs, and close out your short. Now, any pullback, add longs because we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna play the final push to the previous high. Okay. So we're gonna go into some longs here. Add a couple. One, two, and add a couple more. One, two. Pulls back. Add a couple more. Good. So let's get up. Let's build up to one full position. Okay. One full lot. Any pullbacks, add more. Come on, pull back. <laughs> sometimes I find, sometimes I find I, I like root against myself because <laughs> I'm like, I want to get more trades on. Yeah. And you're like, no, don't, don't make the run now. <laughs> Any pullback, still add. Any pullback, add. It's going to just pop though. Yeah. If it pulls back, we're still in this trade. It's still good. If it pulls back, I want it to pull back. This is going to run, John. Would you put pending orders up here? Um, so I'm expecting, I'm not expecting a full breakout. That's a lower probability okay. at this point, but I am expecting a test of the highs. Okay. So if I can get the test of the highs and get two pips, I, uh, that's that's a really easy high probability trade. If I if I expect at this point, if I expect a breakout and a big range bar, a lower probability, you'll make a lot of money, but a lower probability trade. Mm -hmm. And and I'm all for the higher probabilities yeah. and the consistency of income. Small repeatable what you yeah. I call it sips, you know, when you take a hot chocolate, yeah. you don't just gulp it down or yeah. coffee. You you sip on it and you've got lots of enjoyment. <laughs> Any pullbacks, add add some more. Add. Add. It's holding. Yeah. Now I may have a down leg. That's an expected move. So I'm expecting well, that's okay. We're going to build a position here. We're going to keep it under the one. But if it, if it gets a down leg and it makes the turn to the downside, then we're going to add it the next white line. And you pull back work up to one full lock. You are wobbling, my friend. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> you are you are a wobbler now. <laughs> Each candle has a lot of information. Oh, so much! Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like um, a good novel, right? It's like mm -hmm. a good novel. You're like each each word, each sentence brings new light and yeah. and, and uh, understanding. Pulls back, add more up, all the way up to the one. Not pulling back. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna. It's gonna try its break. Add. That's a little far. Yeah, it's right at the top now. Yeah, we're not far from testing the high. Right. That's what I'm saying. We want. We want to test the high. We want to. We want to get that that um, that last push to the high, that's what we're going for here. Pull the 
goes down just a bit. See that top of that wick right there? Yeah. That's what we're going for, a test of that. It might be a lot to ask, but but I, I feel pretty good I've been asking the market for it. Pulls back anymore, add two, two quick ones, one, two, and two more, one, two. Now that's the very top. Yeah, we're, we gotta stop now. But if it pulls back, do it again. <laughs> Now, if it breaks down, stop. Don't don't add more. So if it drops, but okay, add two here. One, two. Add two more. One, two. Add two more. Two. Okay, now stop. And we should be testing this. Yeah, we're gonna test. Is testing the turn right? So the turn right now is that is right where oh right here below that yeah. So as long as it stays above that, we're in we're in good shape for the test of the high. Add one and prepare for a breakdown. Just prepare yourself mentally for a breakdown. A mental breakdown, is that what? <laughs> <laughs> that is the life of a trader, mental <laughs> breakdowns. <laughs> yeah, it's just sitting on there. It's like on the, it's on the edge. It's finding support. Yeah, for sure, yeah. There's a lot of reasons why it'll find support here, but remember, we've had an up leg, big consolidation, so it could easily break down in which case we'll add another layer, we're in 1.8. So if it holds the support, then we'll look for it to rally back up. Longer it holds that level. Stubborn. Yeah, it is. So it's holding on a bearish candle right here. That's, we want a bullish candle. There we go, that's good. Now we want a little higher high. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. Yeah, you can do that for sure. Easier to see. There, that's a good candle right there. Ooh, let's do a couple of things real quick. Let's get a little greedy. Aha, uh -huh. yes. I hate to say that because I don't want to promote the idea of greed in trading, but there is a time and a place for it. Right? Adding to your winnings. Yeah. And, uh, and really what we're doing is balancing everything out so that... Yes. So it tested the high. Bar. Yeah, it, it tested the high. And <laughs> now add, it comes add a down. couple more right here. One, two. That volatility is. I like the volatility. Actually, it's it's a good thing. I like the I like the idea that it's moving fast right now. Add a couple more. Yeah, this is the the whip before the. The run. Keep going now. Now, if we're short term bullish, mm -hmm. long term bearish, when would you, on this chart, when would you change your bias? When you, we're we're only in this because of the short term bias right now. Right. Um, after this move, after it breaks and tests the highs, it'll either continue and run, in which case we'll start to fade into shorts um, and then get back to the original trade setup that we were talking about originally. Yeah. Nice, John. Very good. Very good. Very good. Awesome. That was too easy. <laughs> 
makes us makes us have a little patience, right? <laughs> All right, so now so we're going to get back break, into yeah. this, the fade scenario. So let's go back over to our five-minute chart and we'll zoom in on that. And let's see where we're at relative to our lines that we set up originally. We'll just break Ooh, start, to, start to fade. Add one, short. That's not good. Add a short here. Now we're, now we're fading the outside edge of this. One more. Not yet. So the candle, to... hold on, the candle, <laughs> what happened is you you adjusted the screen and so I'm thinking that candle oh, yeah. is bigger than it is. <laughs> so so uh, it's, it's There's no optical also. illusions for me. <laughs> or optical delusions. <laughs> so actually we should expect another couple candles higher. But maybe, just maybe, we'll get a couple of pullback big enough here. Maybe, just maybe. Retest the breakout mm -hmm. at this level. Yeah. This is the, the first retracement. Or this is the first pullback, the first retracement after the breakout. So we might want to close out of that one. Yeah. Now let's see what it does here. Looking left does tell a story. Yeah. So two wicks on the bottom. Oh, so close. Oh, I see. And now, I may just want to close that out. <laughs> Sometimes you got to be quick, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes by the time, by the time the thought happens, it's it's over. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> Let me draw a line real quick on this too. So here was our old our old breakout point, right? So if it pulls back and finds some consolidation, we'll actually take a long uh, for another leg higher. Okay. So we'll, because we'll, that's a healthy move, right? If it just rallies hard, rally, 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 and there's not a news event behind it, then, then it's a weak move. Oh, add, add a long right here, a one. Long, long, hold, hold, hold. One more. And one more. Oh, big outside range. <laughs> those are those are the bane of my existence, right? Because you're bullish and then all of a sudden you turn bearish. Yeah. So add one more right here. Let's see if we can get at least a little bit of a, a retracement on that big range candle. One more long and one more long. Okay, now we're going to pause for a second. I'm going to do some adjusting. Very important that we get out of this with as little a loss as possible. And so where is that? Where's the highest probability for a bounce? Probably right about there. So we'll pull these two down, but we're going to need to add a couple more to make up for that. One more here. We'll pull these down. So we're, in, we're kind of in a little bit of a fix-it mode because we're in an outside range. If our average entry price is where you're pulling to. Yeah, then we'll break even on this trade. Right. That's, our, that's my objective that's right cool. now. Yeah, and so we had that big support level, the big consolidation, right? The big consolidation right there. So our target's gonna be the top, the bottom of that consolidation is our target. So we're gonna move all these down. And all we need is just a quick bounce. And we can fix a lot with a quick bounce. Let's see if we can get that. 
I just added a few here. I'll pull these down, pull that down. So all of these are going to be lost trades except for a very select few. Obviously, with an upside down risk to reward ratio like this, you don't want to be wobbling in front of news or any. <laughs> yeah, news. I don't know that news is out. News should have come out. Scheduled news should have come out at the top of the hour. So, rally, just some volatility, like not, not a grinding market, guys. We need a little bit of a retracement here. Our whole objective is to break even. So we're going to watch our pips, our unrealized pips down here. Mm -hmm. And as soon as that gets to close to zero, we're going to start closing out of a bunch of trades. You wouldn't want to just flatten the position? Or flatten it. There's... Uh, that's a big move. Okay, so now we're going to adjust these because that the probability of it hitting up there not that great. So pull these down. In here. And we're going to add a couple more longs. Can can someone check and make sure see if there's been any news announcements? Jeff's on it. <laughs> so we're in a little bit of it. We're, we're still really small in this trade, so I'm not too worried at this point. Now, this is our big, our point of no return, right? Right here. So we are now in what I call fix it mode. So now we're in fix it mode. Now we got to figure out where does this thing end? And we're going to play fix it mode all the way back down to remember that circle that we put on? Yep. Yeah, all the way back down into there. We're going to trade fix it mode. Now, I've got two pips all the way back up to the last. So I want to bid a, bid a, a big position right in here. Dang it. I got a little, little slow in there. Because I want to I want to book those profit. That little retracement. I want to catch as much of those little retracements as I can. You're bringing down your average entry. Mm -hmm. Very good. Our turning point is this white line right here. So it, it'll, it can rally all the way up to there. So now we're gonna take some of that profit that we just made and we're gonna peel off some of the bigger losses here. Two, three. So I'm talking about what happened, John. What's that, what so is it? So Boris Johnson came out and he spoke just a few minutes ago and he said that, um, he said there's a good chance of a Brexit deal coming along that strengthened the euro. But then two minutes later in the speech, he opened up his mouth and said, no matter what, we're leaving by October 31st. Oh. Yeah, so that's what shot it up. He goes, hey, we're going to, we'll work out a deal. But then later in his speech, he just pounded it back down. So no matter what, they would be leaving by then. So it probably priced in now. But he set it up and then down. It's like a Toronto Beach when he's doing <laughs> nice. Now I'm just balancing everything out. So in case we get a turn, in case we get a turn, this should be pretty close to balanced, right? Just balancing everything out, making a little bit more profit on some. A little bit less profit on others, the losses on some. So here's the turning point right here. We'll draw that in. That's the turning point. 
So if it breaks that, we should hit, we should get a good chance at this. Would you expect that to retrace 50%? Uh, to, um, maybe, maybe not, at least uh, 23%. All right, well, let's see if I picked the right spot up there. <laughs> Nervous, just kidding. So wick and the candle closed. So it wasn't a true break. That'll, that'll open up the door for another down leg. So we'll expect that little down leg. Um, just be prepared for it. It's almost like the baseball announcer has to follow the game and he knows all the players' names, he knows uh -huh. all the plays, and he can put two and two together at once. <laughs> You're doing the same thing by reading the play as it happens. As it happens huh? So let's see if it, if it can find support here. A higher low would be a good thing, and then a rally up. So let's see if it does that. Kind of everything hinges on this break higher, this, this reversal point. But, but that's kind of a low probability. So if it drops down, what we're going to do is add another layer. We're at 2.6. So if it drops down, and we can get two pips before the top of that, before the turning point. Oh, OK. That's when we want to add another layer. If it drops enough to allow for two pips. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it didn't do it, so that's no. why we didn't put any trades on. But let's see if it can make the turn here. And I want to pull a couple more of those up higher. I know, I know it doesn't seem right, but... Uh, is if it makes that pop, if it makes that turn, it should be a good, a good pop. We want to squeeze every penny out of that. Oh. <laughs> Last second. Ago. Yeah, it does that. There's still that. The, there's the specter of this big sell-off. That's you know, there everybody's keying in on that big move down. Everybody knows this point exists, mm -hmm. and so if they're if they're going to close out of trades, they kind of do what we do, where they're closing out right in here because it's a high probability point. Yeah. Sean, we, uh, over in London, as soon as he said that he would never ask for an extension, he lost from um, his majority in the House of Commons. Uh, some of that anti Brexit conservatives went back and he won. He wouldn't ask for an extension. Gotcha. Pound's been all over the place. Yeah, Pound's, Pound, you just stay away from him for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> All right, test number two for three. <laughs> you can feel it, right? You can feel the test. You can feel the market trying to make that break. It's also pretty cool, Gene, when you can when you can identify where that point is on the chart and then you see it happen, right? Yeah. So that's a good thing to practice in your trading. You know, where is that point? Where's that that turning point? Where's that point where where the, the battle really intensifies between the buyers and the sellers? So one test, two tests, 
three tests, four tests. This is weakening, right? Every time it tests and fails, it weakens. Yeah. So something's gonna have to break and break hard in order for us to hit all these targets. That's why I move them up. Um, but the probability is, is, is getting weaker and weaker and weaker. With four tests, you know, that, that, that kind of takes them the uh, steam yeah, yeah. out of it. So I'm, I'm prepared for another leg down. This point. And if it if it is to fall down, what do we do? We add. Yeah, as long as as long as we can stay above that point, or we'll go look at that that gap. We'll really want to play off that gap. We're in fix it mode right now, still. Okay. So yeah, there's five. Let's we'll watch this deteriorate now. Watch for it to deteriorate now, or. Maybe it gets it through. <laughs> yeah, either or, but but it's weak, weakening. So we need either a big, big money dump, or it's going to start to deteriorate. We'll see a big, we'll see, we'll see a big candle to the downside if it weakens much more. All right, ten seconds left on the candle. It, we're above the turning point. Ten, seven, six, five, four, three oh, seconds. So as long as it can hold the body up there, a new candle. Mm. See? See? All right. That's the open of the new candle. So we still have 50 seconds or so. Yeah, we have a new candle. So now we, that's fit. test number five failed. Let's see if this one. Ultimately, we're targeting this red line over here for well, these highs. So. Right now, we're in fix-it mode, right? Because we had the outside range. Right. So there's there's two stages. Think of it like this. There's two stages. There's the trade setup stage where you've, you've mapped everything out. You know what you're going to do. And you've identified your breaking point where everything kind of changes on you. Mm -hmm. And when you cross that changing point, you're now in, in mode number two, which is fix-it mode. So you're not in trade setup mode, you're in fix-it mode. Yeah. We're still in fix-it mode right now. Okay. We're not looking to make a big chunk of money. We're just looking to, to get out of this with as minimal loss as possible. So now that, see, now this is the, the breakdown that I was talking about. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's see if this candle has it's got a wick now. So it's now it's doing the same thing on the bottom as it was doing on the top. So right. we're building if, a range. Probably. If it can find build support here, if it can build support on that white line, then yeah, we want to build another layer. But the momentum's to the downside, so we got to be careful on it on us on setting up like that. So. Let's see, so we should see if there's some follow through. Let's wait for that candle to close and then we'll see what it does. One second. And then, yeah, nice. Now, any pull back down, now we can add until it breaks below, if it breaks below that low of the previous candle, yeah. and then we stop. So, any pullbacks, add one, two. Pullbacks now. This could be an outside range in our favor. <laughs> uh, not yet. I'm so tempted to click when it pulls just a little. But like you said, you have to wait until it reaches mm -hmm. the level. Yeah. So think about it like this. Adding a position right now doesn't do you any favors, yeah. right? Unless you get the move, but you're not, we're not, yeah, we're I'm not adding strategically. Risk, right? Yeah, you're just adding risk yeah. and not necessarily optimizing my position. Yeah, if you can think that mm -hmm. when you're in a situation like that, it'll save you a ton of money. Yeah, yeah those big loss trades, those are the big loss, the, the ones you, you work, you make money, make money, make money, make money. And then you have that big loss one. What I just told you right here, 
that saves you from the big loss yeah. scenarios. Because the tendency here is to just build into bigger positions and you have, you're not, you're not, yeah. it's not a strategic move. It's just adding size. It turns into gambling after a while. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> 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 it kind of does uh, if you if you if you look at it that way. Yeah. Big long consolidation. Oh, there nice. Go. There's a break. So look, we're, we're at break even. So our, our adjustment was good, right? Because now if it hits those targets, we'll be at break even, which is what we want to do in exit mode. And we'll actually make a little bit of money on this trade if we can, if we can hit the entire target level. Keep going. Okay, you can actually close out of a couple of these. The higher ones. Yeah, the higher ones, because you know you're not. We're not going to make that much more money, and we want to lighten up our position as much yeah. as we can. So add enough. Take one more of those off. Let's see if it pulls back. Should get two candles, three candles of bullish if it's a true breakout. So this is not turning out to be a true breakout. <laughs> no, nope. it's a good thing we closed our higher low. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. So now you can take those two that the three that you closed off. And you can reposition them on down here if it pulls back right there. One, two. One, two. So the difference between doing it this here versus the before is that, hey, we'll see you. Thank you for coming by. <laughs> the difference is, is that we took and lightened our position at the top, and now we're re-adding them down at a lower point. So that's the difference. Now, strategically, we're good to add another long position right in here. We can add a couple of layers all the way down to that pivot low. Yes. And then the next thing I want to do real quick, add one more too. One more. One more. One more. Okay, these are, these are all coming in underneath the turning point, right? Yeah. So this was almost the exact duplicate of what happened before, where I had the breakout and then it fell all the way back down through. So, but hopefully it won't continue lower. <laughs> so now you're, we're still looking to go long. Yeah, we're still long. Uh -huh. Only to close this out. After that, we're heading back. Short, right? Because yeah, we'll, we'll so this have is reached our our red line. Oh, no, we're yeah, so we're, st we're we're going long because we got we got stuck in a bad trade up there. Um, and what you know, part the majority, a lot of our trading session, John is is getting managing is managing a bad trade, mm -hmm. right? You think about all the trades that we've placed up until this point, they've all been like easy, breezy, yeah. um, beautiful. Um, this one has given us a little bit of a fit. So we had a little bit of an outside range. But, you know, I, I don't think there's a trading session that I get into that I don't have to work out of a, 
out of a position like this, manage your drawdowns. Manage my drawdowns. So this is all part of the process of trading. Yeah. Um, and, we've, and we have to adopt a little bit of a different mindset. So we're not trading for setup now. Remember, we're trading for fix. Yeah. And if we happen to make money while we're fixing it, all the better. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. So we're still in that trade. <laughs> You have to have a plan A and a plan B and be willing to switch back, back and forth. Back and forth, yep. Uh -huh. and, and understand that your objectives are different in both scenarios. Yeah. Oh, so these are a little outside of the, um, they're just slightly above the breakout point, those targets. Yep. So we can either adjust them down for a high probability target or up to maximize. And I'll let you make that call and it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> Go for the money, John. <laughs> I'm a risk taker. You are. <laughs> All right. Uh -huh. So now we have to break. So that was your choice, you said. I, I can go for the easy money or I, I can go for the break. And we're going for the break, which is good. No, not, no. Either, either way, way is yeah. it's sixes, right? We either give up a little bit of income and go for the high probability. There's a way out of each possibility. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely, yeah. So you just, I guess the point is, is that you need to know what you're choosing when you choose it. Yeah, right. And stick with it and stick with it. That's another problem I had is changing my mind halfway through. Yeah, or well, having two two opposing points of view. <laughs> yeah. That's why I chose not to use two time frames anymore. Uh -huh. If I trade one minute, I'll open and close my trades on the one minute trade, and I'll use the higher time frames only for trend determination. Yeah, because otherwise I find myself having two opposing points of view, and then. I don't know which one to trade anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, you're not alone in that uh, that dilemma. Sometimes I think traders are schizophrenic. They're like I'm long. Well, sometimes I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm the, I'm the patience part of it also plays on your nerves because you start looking at ways to exit your trade on other time frames. Mm -hmm. And it, it, uh, for me, anyways, it never worked. All right, three candles of consolidation. This is good. We're building, uh, it's either good or bad, right? But we're building pressure and stress into the trade, into the market. And pressure and stress is usually resolved by a big move. So. <laughs> All right, that. Big move to the ads. Yes, add. You do your ads. One, two. One, two. Pause for a second. See, these are all high probability targets, so that's good. Nice. Very nice. It's a lot easier to gain one or two minutes ahead than it is to look at an yeah, hourly an chart. An hourly chart and mm -hmm. know where it's yeah. heading in the next couple of hours. Yeah, Jeff and I, Jeff and I have done a lot of research on that that idea. Um, it's a lot easier to see, you know, two to three minutes into the future than two yeah. to three hours. I'm glad I determined the same thing you have. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a point where you start to close your losers no matter what? Dave, size will you find the, my battery for my computer here? I'm about empty. <coughs> it's in my backpack over here. 
Let's pause there. <coughs> Now, one thing here is if we break below the, the previous pivot, we hope to find some support there. So we'll build another layer there um, as it comes down into that, into that point. Add right here. One. One. And then let's pause there. Now, the thing about this is, is that now these, that big, the big, the big target up yep. here, where we're, the further we get away from that, the, the less likely. likely it's going to, our probabilities drop significantly. So it doesn't make sense to keep, to it, keep there. it there. Bring it down somewhere around here. Yeah, so, so one, one technique that I'll use is I'll pull, um, I'll pull them into the high probability zone, which is the was right below the uh, inside this box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'll pull a bunch of these down into that, like maybe half, and then let half run. So that way I can lighten position. In fix it mode, you always have to lighten position as much as you can. It's about half of them. Mm -hmm. Maybe move these ones up. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Now you do have you do have a resistance, right? All the old support level, that yeah. white line, the bottom white line, yeah, yeah. right there. Right. That is now a resistance, so it'll be hard pressed. You'll have to we'll have to break that in order to get to that that layer right. of target. So we've got to we got to break that one, and then we got to break the top of that in order to hit the top layer. Should so, I even bring the rest of them down? Yeah, two 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 breaks is it's not you don't have the greatest of probabilities on a two break move. I'm about to lose. Sorry. Everyone in the tap room, I'm about to lose my computer. So we're going to get some power on it. All right. It may, it may break lower, and if so, we may be into our gap analysis at the beginning of the session. That circle. Yep. Let's go back here. So, uh, right here, and remember the trick that I taught you at the very beginning of the session, we'll take the move from the top to the bottom, and, and pro forecast that into the future. So that puts us right there, which is in fighting spitting distance of the uh, of that gap. So we're going to continue to trade the long side of this all the way to the gap analysis to the gap yep. point earlier. Hopefully, we won't have to go through that, but we're prepared for it. Okay. Now, would we still be pulling down the upper targets? Yeah, that's a that's a good. As long as it doesn't, I'll, I'll keep half above, half below, as long as it doesn't break that. Okay, makes sense. If it breaks that, then they all come down. That would be plan B. That's plan B. are so starting really to slow good. down a little. Yeah, they are really a good time of day. Mm -hmm. 
it's winding up and that sideways consolidation is winding up just like before. So be prepared for a break lower. And we just wait. <laughs> That's the toughest part. Yeah. That's when my mind starts to play tricks with me, trying to optimize things that don't need to be optimized. Yeah. That's dangerous, right? Yeah. All right. We tested support. So we can add a couple more if you want to here. One, two, maybe a couple more. But now we're below support. So we'll wait now to see. We got one candle. It's still got 26 seconds, so there's a possibility it can form a wick and come back up. But that's a long shot here now. Mm. Whoa. 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 Never mind, that was a long shot right there. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> that was beautiful. Okay, so that was not planned, but we'll take it. <laughs> That's a nice flush. That's the right place at the right time. Yeah. Oh. On the right side of the right time. That's right. <laughs> do we want to fade this? So the question now is do we want to fade it? Uh, not we're we're in a really unprobable time. I was looking at on the left. <laughs> so, uh, level of resistance. Up. I got to tell you, John. I get we get possibly 20, 30 calls a day from our traders saying that they got slippage, bad slippage, and that it wasn't fair that they got filled in at a at a price that's worse. Than than what they uh, they had it in for. Yeah. Well, you just got good slippage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It feels awesome. You got you got the you got the best of that. <laughs> That's the thing is it, it, it goes both ways. Slippage goes both ways. But that was a nice that was a nice thing. By the time by the time that triggered hit your target and triggered the market, you actually got higher bigger bigger profit than that. So that's a good job. Perfect timing too. Just before we start moving our lines then. That's right. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's uh, let's do this. Let's check and see where we were, where we are. Um, we started the session, John, out at fifty-one thousand down here in the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, we started the session out at fifty-one thousand fifty-five dollars and ninety-six cents. We are now at $51,358.91. So in this little trading session, one hour's worth of work. Uh, yeah, roughly one hour's worth of work. So let's, uh, let's do the math here. So 51 Minus our starting balance, which was fifty one four fifty five point nine six. That's three hundred and two dollars cool. of profit in one hour. Well done, nice, very well done. That's a that's attorney's wages, right? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Maybe even better than attorney's wages. <laughs> Depends on that level of. <laughs> so three hundred and two dollars. The average, the the uh, in the United States at least, I don't know what Canada is, but the average income for a person is one hundred and seventy three dollars in a day. One hundred and seventy three dollars a day, and we made three hundred and two dollars in in a trading session. Yeah, that's awesome. So we did better than most people make in a day. We'll see ya. <laughs> Um, which is great, and that's what we're that's what we're striving to do. Our, 
as traders, we want, we want to be highly effective with our time, um, you know, because we can go, we, you know, we have lives, we want to go fish, yeah. we want to go golf, we want to go do, you know, stuff with the kids and grandkids and, and, uh, and so we want to be effective with our time, right? And honestly, I don't know of another profession that can give you the type of returns for your time than, than trading. It's, it's almost like going fishing, except you get to choose the size of the fish. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yep, I want a, I want a 21 incher, yeah. <laughs> four pounder. <laughs> And you get it. So nice trading today. As is usual and customary, I would like to, I'd like to give you the profits from this trading session. Thank you. So wow. now I traded last night for you. You did? I did. Yeah. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to trade a little bit before our session and, and give you some of that session. So my trading session last night, I started the account out at 50,000 wow. even. So last night I made $1,055 in, in my night trading session. Wow. So what I'll do here, Jean, is, uh, is write a check for the entire profit for your session and my session. Wow. How's that? <laughs> Thank you so much. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, you're welcome. Fantastic. So that's, that's, that's American. Yeah, that's even <laughs> I'm taking that to the bank today. Yeah. While well, the exchange rate is good. <laughs> yeah. Before the rates go down again. Yeah. <laughs> so that puts the profit at one thousand three hundred fifty-eight dollars. Wow. And you did that during the Asian session. 90, yeah, that was the Asian session last night. $1,358.91. Do you want to do the conversion, Jay? Yeah, we got to do the conversion. It's close to $1,500 for sure. Wow, thank you. How about $1,500 Canadian? No, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Wow. Well worth the five hours travel time. Pay for your trip and then something. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's his trading. I just clicked the button. No, you did good. You, you good assistance, Sean. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. I'll take that problem. <laughs> There's a lot of value to be had in just one or two bars previous to the one you're trading right now. It's uh, you oversee a lot of things just by looking at the chart and not really realizing what just just happened and how you can make use of that information. Sure. And, uh, Bye -bye. Thank you. See ya. All right. <laughs> awesome. There you go. Thanks. Congrats. Thank you. You want to do a celebrity shot? Yeah, yeah. Everything we can do. The, the big check. check. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Fantastic. That was great. We had, uh, for those of you out in the tap room and then also the group here, we had some great, some great learning opportunities in this trading session. And I think, you know, when you're sitting down, John, and you're trading, the market really is the best instructor. You know, we can learn a lot from through observing and, and seeing what the market does and how we how we feel, monitoring how we feel, the anxiety level that we're having and the and the optimism that we're having. And and if we go through and develop a practice of always trying to learn from the market, we're gonna get better. Mm -hmm. Every every session we we, we sit down in, yeah. we're gonna get better and better. I totally agree. So I think uh, let's let me just take a couple of takeaways from this session. Um, number one, that first little tip in the in the beginning where we measure, you have a leg, and then you have a consolidation, and then a continuation. Go back, always go back to the first leg, and use that as a measure for the second leg. Right. It's just it, it's just a good to get you in the ballpark. Would you classify that as a measured move? That's a measured move, yeah, for okay. sure. So you can use the same methodology 
across all market time frames. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Hourly charts, daily charts, weekly charts, monthly charts. It all, it'll work the same. Yeah. If you've got that setup where you've got a real good leg and then a consolidation and then a continuation. Yep. So that's a, that was a good takeaway from this session. Another one, um, I think this is probably more, even more important than that first one is you remember that you're always trading in a couple of different modes, mm -hmm. right? I think uh, my kids play these video games and they have these different modes like ultra hard gamer <laughs> or, you know, easy peasy. Yeah, you know, mom and dad level. Yeah, maybe. mom and dad level versus kid <laughs> level or whatever. So we're, you're in different modes at different times in your trades, right? Most of our session was in a setup mode where we have a setup, we're looking for the move to form, we know where our stopping points are, and as long as it doesn't hit, trigger those stopping points or the, the point of no returns, we're still in that setup mode. We can trade it and trade it and trade it and trade it. Yeah. The minute that it crosses out of that stopping point, we're changing modes. <laughs> So the whole latter half of this trading session was in fix, fix it mode. It was in a different mode. We weren't looking to book big profits. What we were, what we were ultimately trying to do is manage position size. We didn't want to get too big because this thing could have broken down the other way. It's just as easy. In fact, the probability is slightly skewed for this market to go down at this point after that big outside yeah. range, right? So keeping in mind, always keep in mind what mode you're in and uh, what your objectives are in those different modes. Awesome. So, and I think that'll Makes help total you. sense. I think that'll help you a ton. Be willing to switch between the two also. Yeah. Because I, I find myself, uh, if I'm confronted with a reversal, it's like, mm, should I, should I not, should I, should I not? And sometimes you, you threaten your stop loss for no good reason. There's other ways to manage that position rather than threatening the stock. Yeah. And yeah. I've, yeah, that's something I learned today for sure. That's good. What else? What else have you learned? Anything? Well, definitely the last couple of bars mean a lot. Uh, the wicks mean a lot. Uh, the bodies mean a lot. And uh, typical you know, three bar reversal, uh, it's not just a three bar reversal, it came about from something. Mm -hmm. So that something is what we're trying to find all the time. And then we can adapt our trading methodology based on what just, just happened. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, paying attention to the wick is something that I, you're the first one I've seen do that. Uh, you know, most people trade patterns or, or uh, uh, formations, mm -hmm. but very few people look at how the actual candle comes to be formed. It's, and, and that's telling in and of itself, especially when it comes near the new candle or near the end of the existing candle. There's a big push. And uh, knowing that ahead of time, even on a 15 minute chart, uh, you can anticipate that push near the end of your candle mm -hmm. and make that an edge. Yeah. Yeah. Anything, any, anything you can do to get a, a sense as to what's the underlying story mm -hmm. in here. Yeah. Um, is gonna is going to help you position and 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 make your make your moves in the market. And the thing I like about the wick, it, it, you're right. I mean, not very many traders will you know do a lot of analysis. A lot on of wicks. <laughs> I, I, well, from what I've read, most people ignore the wick, even when they draw a trend line. You know, and, and so there's information there. there price is. has been there. That's exactly and, right. And because price has been there, we need to be aware. Of, you know, be aware of it. Very good. Excellent. Yeah, for sure. It's, uh, it's, a, it's one method of trading where obviously you don't need indicators and you can get awesome, awesome results mm -hmm. you know, just by paying attention. Yeah, I think that's a, a lost art in our world. Yeah. We, yeah. we are drowned in so much information. Rely on tools. We, uh, we tend to not see the important things mm -hmm. in life or in the trading session. So, yeah. so developing and honing that skill of observation is a very, very valuable thing, I think. Good, yeah. excellent. Yeah. I, I think I, some of it boils down to preparedness also. Like you don't want to trade in front of a news event, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so if you're aware of the time horizon that you have, 
and you can take part in whatever the market gives you. Yeah, and anticipate. Like you said earlier, it's easier to look a couple of minutes ahead than it is to anticipate a couple of hours. <laughs> That's true, right? So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Lots of information there. Oh, thank you. And John, it was great. A real pleasure trading with you today. I really appreciate you driving down from Jasper. <laughs> <laughs> it's not often I get to see you guys in person. So. <laughs> it's been a real delight to, to uh, come to Calgary. We've enjoyed our, our say. Let me ask the uh, group here, anything, any observations, anything that you want to, that we can learn from this session? No, you're teaching us patience. Patience? Yes. <laughs> it's, it's my biggest. Don't like, like What's your trader profile? Uh, well, I'm aggressive. Uh, yeah, yeah, you and me are twins. <laughs> uh, uh, I've, I've, I've had to learn. <laughs> I've had to learn patience. That's a, it's an acquired skill for me. Yeah. We really appreciate the Thank you. I think that patience is a big, it's a big, it's a big part of trading and important that we learn how to, like we could have easily gotten upside down in a very bad way in some of these trading setups today. But, um, but I think uh, John was able to, uh, have that patience, wait for entering into positions that are meaningful and not just adding to size. And I think that makes a big, having that patience yeah. to not get into size when it's not meaningful will do wonders for you as well. Yeah, managing the, the size or the risk is, is probably one of the aspects that I have problems with and boiling down to patience. And so Rex once said to me, if you limit the amount of hours you spend in f for your session, i.e. one four-hour candle, mm -hmm. is more than enough. Yeah. <laughs> then I have to learn to walk away when I'm finished. Yeah. And uh, that, that's been tough because... Yeah, because I don't know if you noticed this, but after that big, after that big close, you were right into the next one. Yeah. I, your I wanted mindset, you wanted to keep going. Yeah, I wanted to fade. It. I would have been okay fading. Yeah, it would have but, worked out. But, <laughs> but yeah, but the point stopping is, and walking away is really hard. Sure. And I think that's where I, I end up giving most of my profits. It is, I see green every day, but I tend to give it back. Yeah. And so walking away is a must. <laughs> Seeing green every day. <laughs> How would that be? Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. I just can't hold on to it. <laughs> By the end of the session, it's all red. Yeah. Oh, all right. Giving it all up. So, yeah, yeah, definitely learning to walk away and, and learning to only take the, the entries that are required and not just throw money at the market. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it, uh, it doesn't help to do that and it doesn't move it either. Right. So, yeah, just managing risk, managing drawdown, I think are the two biggest things that I've learned from doing this. Awesome. Well, it again, it will we'll kind of wrap up here, but it was a, a real pleasure trading with you. Thank you for that. Thank I, you. Thank I could you. do this. I could do this all day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, did all and then I, I did it all night, <laughs> so I might as well do it all day. <laughs> Why, thank you for that, too. Um, and for those of you out in the tap room, I think we're going to wrap up here. Now, let me just kind of explain real quick. The, the, this, is, this is what we call a rally. And uh, the rallies, you know, are on location events. And so we're going to be, we'll, we'll be heading out into your neighborhood. Um, often as, as often as we can get it into the schedule but we're going to be traveling around hitting your neighborhoods we are here in in calgary today our first ever rally and we have something like three something like 15 20 folks here today a relatively small room i would love 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 to see these rallies in auditoriums. Mm -hmm. I think that would just be a, a blast. And, and I think the, uh, the, what we can take away from these rallies is really powerful in, in terms of helping us get into a, a position where we can trade successfully. Yep. So we will be looking to build these rallies up um, and traveling around and it's trader on the street, so we want to come out and visit your street out there. So, 
we will uh, we will be uh, we'll be putting a, a schedule out there in the near future. Awesome. We will wrap up. Thank you, Taproom. Always a pleasure trading with you. We will uh, we'll do this again hopefully next week if uh, if I'm not a grandpa by. <laughs> I'm turning into a grandpa. <laughs> Maybe within the next week. <laughs> so uh, we'll play it by ear and uh, see where see where this next week takes us. So thank you, thank you, and we'll see you tap room. Thank you. Explain why patience is a very important part of the street. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I, uh...